During the tense decades of the Cold War, governments across the world prepared for scenarios they hoped would never unfold. Fallout shelters, bunker networks and hidden storage rooms were stocked with supplies meant to sustain life underground for days, weeks or even months. And in many of those shelters, particularly the older ones built before efficient battery-powered gear became common, inspectors and explorers kept finding one item that raised eyebrows. It wasn't a stove. It wasn't a lantern. It produced no flame at all. Yet it provided heat steady enough to warm a small room or keep shelter occupants from freezing. Civil defence manuals barely mentioned it, although engineers used it extensively in training facilities. This forgotten tool, often mislabeled or tossed aside as outdated equipment, was the Cold War fireless heater. It was simple, silent, mechanically reliable, and capable of warming a space without smoke, electricity, or risk of carbon monoxide poisoning. Today, with interest in off-grid survival rising again, this old device offers one of the most practical heating methods for people who want warmth without open flame. The practicality of this design becomes obvious when adapted to modern survival needs. For off-grid preppers, long-distance hikers, or, well, anyone facing emergency cold, the principles behind the Cold War fireless heater can be applied using accessible materials. One modern equivalent uses reusable phase change packs, typically sodium acetate, which generate heat when a metal disc is snapped to trigger crystallization. Several of these placed together inside an insulated container can produce warmth comparable to the original devices. Another method, borrowed from older railway technology, uses brick or soapstone heated by a fire before being wrapped in insulation. The retained heat radiates for hours without flame. These replicates follow the same concept, store heat safely and release it slowly in a controlled environment. For survivalists, the appeal is obvious. You can create reliable heat, even when you cannot risk an open fire. The method becomes even more powerful when paired with proper insulation strategies. Cold War engineers understood that the heater alone wasn't enough. What made it effective was how the shelters were designed to complement it. Thick walls, sealed doors and wool blankets created a micro-environment where even modest heat could accumulate. You can recreate this today by preparing a small insulated emergency space in your home, vehicle or campsite. If you use a modern phase change heater, set it in a low position to encourage convection and wrap yourself in wool or dense synthetic insulation. This concentrates the warmth rather than allowing it to dissipate. The same principle was used in dozens of documented Cold War bunkers. Heat the human, not the room, and let the environment do the rest. This technique remains valuable because it avoids the two main dangers of emergency heating. First, it eliminates the risk of accidental fires, which are one of the leading causes of death in improvised shelters. Second, it avoids fumes that come from candles, stoves or improvised burners. A flame-free, fume-free source of heat was essential in sealed bunkers. Today, it's essential for anyone sheltering in a car during a winter breakdown or setting up a temporary emergency shelter indoors during power outages. The Cold War fireless heater represents one of the rare survival tools that combines safety, practicality and long-term reliability without advanced technology.
If historical survival engineering fascinates you and you want more hidden Cold War and World War II fieldcraft that still works today, subscribe to In the Beginning and share this video. These forgotten tools aren't just relics. They're lessons in self-reliance and they're worth preserving.